Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us. Now, it's fast approaching 10 to 9. Can you believe it? Time flies when you're having fun. Hey, it's almost time for us to go, but not before we head back to uh, Desiree Chauke to tell us a little bit more about what we can expect from the ANC Women's League Conference that's taking place at the beginning of today. Des, it's over to you once again. Thank you so much, Ayanda. The women in uh, green, black and gold are starting to make their way in. 3,000 of them expected here today to come and deliberate and make decisions on some of the big issues that they think are necessary to take the women's agenda forward. And some of those issues are about business. And for that, we'll be talking to Nolita Fakude in a bit uh, about how business can support the decisions being taken here. But also another issue is violence against women. And for that, we're joined by a senior member in the African National Congress in Gauteng, Jackie Mufugeng. You saw her a lot talking to Criselda during the Oscar Pistorius trial. And um, Jackie, welcome to Morning Live. And you, you're saying your biggest concern, not only during this conference, but during this Women's Month, is that Oscar Oscar Pistorius will be going to court in August. What are your concerns there? As the Women's League, we are concerned that uh, it cannot be... You can look at me. It cannot be in on the 21st of August, in the Women's Month, that uh, the parole board can decide that he goes. And then we are saying that uh, not in this month. The parole board must think about another month. Women of all organizations meeting in other sectors in the Women's League, we are saying that uh, the minister must consider that because it cannot happen in this country. It's an insult to women and it's an insult to the country. You're bringing up an important issue where a big concern has been that the Women's League has issues and concerns, but no one listens to them. Do you think this plea will be received positively? We are hoping it will, it will be received positively because we are many. It's not only the Women's League that is raising this issue. And we are hoping that the minister must listen to us because it's women of this country that are suffering, that are having challenges. Noting all the challenges of cases that are going in and out of courts and the Women's League being spread in all areas to try to make sure that women actually are protected and the state actually listens to them. You were also talking about an event uh, that is important in terms of women in this month concerning the number four prison. Tell us about that, that um, uh, event. On Saturday, the Progressive Women's Movement and the Women's League, as you know, that it has got a number of women. We realized that at number four, which is a woman's a jail at, in Johannesburg, there was a history of a woman called Daisy de Melker. Daisy de Melker, everybody knows that in the year of 1932, she was actually a sentence uh, and hanged, the first, second woman to be hanged, who killed husbands for actually uh, uh, insurance. And we are seeing her history may, might, might belong somewhere, but I'm sure the South African police services not in that because that is a jail for we struggled women and their history must be preserved. Let us not distort history. And we are saying she must go and rest in peace. And as the Progressive Women's Movement and the Women's League, we are going to unveil the tombstone because she was killed and she was the first woman to be hanged. Thank you so much for taking us into that history and thanks for talking to us, Jackie. We're going to bring Nolita now. And thank you so much for talking to us. We hope you enjoy the conference. Nolita... Thanks for taking the time to come and talk to us. You are and have been recognized as one of um, the most influential business people in the country. But what is your role within the Women's League? Thank you very much for the invitation. My role within the Women's League is that of a South African woman who, in solidarity with other women, believe that it's important to recognize and acknowledge the bigger impact that an, an institution like this has to play in our society. But one of the things that were holding up the holding of the conference was finances. And you're in business. How can South African business support the aspirations of this gathering? I think as South African businesses, there's a role for individual business people as well as for bigger businesses to make sure that 
uh, organizations like this hold their conferences because it's not about the conference, but it's more about the dialogue that takes place during a conference. And that dialogue is important, especially to deal with the issues that are impacting on social economic transformation rights for women. Issues that talk to access in finance for women and also issues around just general well-being of women in society as well as thriving in our economy. What is your sense of the development of women entrepreneurs and, and, and women in business, women in leadership? The, the development is unfortunately very slow, in my opinion, in that women in business have mainly been getting opportunities that are just small in comparison to what is possible. And part of that challenge is because most women do talk about the issue of a challenge of accessing finance as well as accessing opportunities. More often than not, people hear that there's been a bigger opportunity, but they would not have known where and how to access it. So we've got to make sure that through structures like these and also business associations, we start talking more to the voice of women and asking the question, where are the women before a decision is made so that we can make sure that people have been able to access the information and then obviously be able to to participate in a fair and equal way. Thank you so much for talking to us. Nolita Fakude, an executive director with Sasol, but also a very influential business person in South Africa. And that's it from Morning Live this morning. But the broadcast continues on our 24-hour news channel on Channel 4.